responsibility. Yeah. But in order to receive the possessions and the responsibilities, we must first be in the right position. Yeah. Can I go there for a moment? <laughs> we cannot possess anything in Christ without first being in the right position. When I have a possession, I have a responsibility. Mm -hmm. But there can be no position without possession and no possession without responsibility. Amen. Stay with me. We're not responsible for our position. We are responsible after God has given us our possession. Amen. See, that's them folk that get saved and want to preach the next day. You're not ready to receive the possession, and you're not responsible to handle what comes with it. In other words, God puts us in a position first. Then he gives us the possession, and with the possession comes the responsibility. Peace. 
Well, you got to do what God says to do. You got to do what God says to do. He had them march. He had them blow the horns. He had them shouting. It's interesting, my brothers and sisters, that whenever God seems to not make sense, he always gives us a hint that what he is doing is in order. For if you read in that first verse, you'll find that God had already second verse told Joshua, he said, see, I have delivered Jericho into your hands. Now catch this. They had it marched. They hadn't shouted. They hadn't brought the priest. They hadn't carried the ark. But God already said, I have delivered. Amen. See, see, the problem we have is we're waiting for God to do something so miraculous that everybody will see it and give you praise. But God said, I've already done what you're looking for. But the problem is you don't see what I've already done. Some of y'all waiting for a healing from cancer. God already healed and you didn't even know it. Some of you waiting for some great big testimony of how God brought you out of the fire. God delivered your spirit out of fire and you didn't even know it. We're so busy trying to impress each other. Look at somebody tell him he's preaching. He's preaching. So... God told them in the second verse that I've already delivered Israel to you. Then he also says to them in the fourth verse, he says, but I'm not only giving them to you, but I'm putting myself in the middle. Whenever God goes with us, God places himself strategically where the enemy can see there's something different about you. Jericho being such a big city, being so encamped around with army, but the Bible tells us they hid behind their gates. Now wait, I know y'all don't catch this. Israel came with horns and singing, but Jericho hid behind their gates. Israel had praise and worship leaders. But Jericho hid behind their gates. Well, why is that, Pastor? Well, if you look at the history of how God used Israel, God always sent Judah first. Because God realized that it's praise that brings your deliverance. The devil don't like when you praise God. And Lord forbid you praise him with at least one other person who's been through something you've been through. I don't have nobody in here. See, you do have to understand, when you are giving God praise, you're not just praising him because of what he's done for you, but somebody else who's been through the same thing will join in your praise, and the Bible says that one can chase ten thousand. Yes. Yes. Oh, yes. That's why I never understood how you can have quiet church. Amen. If you really understood what it meant by your praise, you'd walk in and shout. Mm. You, you'd walk in speaking in tongues. You'd walk in singing. You'd be at home singing, in school singing, in the grocery store singing, in the laundromat singing. Why are you singing? I'm winning my battle. 